All right, we're going to dive into the uh, fantasy landscape, and we're going to break down um, what kind of things do landscape artists uh, do to create that depth, and how can we do that inside of Photoshop. Okay, so first off, this um, this project, there's lots of YouTube videos. You can type in, you know, fantasy landscape Photoshop into Google, and you can come up with a, a ton of different stuff, even how to make it. Um, but a fantasy landscape is just like a regular landscape, only it's got all this kind of weird stuff that's impossible for, you know, for it to exist in the real world. And that's where Photoshop comes in. But first we should break down what actually happens in a landscape in order to recreate that sense of depth. So you can just type in landscape photography into, into Google and you'll come up with a lot of great things. Um, and one thing you notice about landscape photography, it creates this really great sense of depth. And how is that? How does that happen? Um, well, first we have as things get smaller, or as things go further in the distance, they get smaller. So if you notice um, this rock here that's near us in the foreground, um, if that rock were you know back here next to the lake, whatever, it'd be really really small. Okay, that, that much seems obvious to anyone. Okay, but what else happens? So if we had, you know, a large rock here and a large rock in the distance, what would, what's another difference would there be? Okay, so there's scale, the size is smaller. But also if you notice, as things go back in the space here, um, it gets a little bit more faded, a little bit more blue also. So the colors change a little bit as they go back in space. And then um, you also get less detail, okay? So lots of detail in the foreground. You can see all the little shadows and the cracks and stuff. Back here, you can't see any detail at all. So um, things get smaller. Uh, things get a little bit more faded or blue colored. And things get less detailed or even blurry as they go back into the, di the distance there. Okay, so we're going to do that in our pictures. And we're going to start inside of Photoshop, the new composition. Our compositions are going to be 16 inches wide, 8 inches tall, and we're going to do between 150 and 300 for resolution. I think 200 resolution is going to be great. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to get out a brush tool here, make it really, really small so I can make some nice thin lines. The first thing we need to do is we need to make a horizon line, okay? And that's that's the vanishing point. So everything that's in the picture will kind of disappear into that vanishing point. Now you have two options here. You can put it in the lower third, so right about there, or you can put it in the upper third, which is right about there. So with the line up here, that's more of like a top-down perspective. Putting it in the bottom third there, it means that there's it's maybe a lower perspective. I'm going to do the top third here. Okay, and we're going to add in some elements. So landscapes, you know, has, you know, maybe there's some mountains and hills and stuff like that. I like to have overlapping things. That's another thing that creates depth is, you know, overlapping objects. Okay, throw some mountains in there. Uh, maybe there's some nice forests. That's apparently a forest. Okay. Um, what else? Maybe we have some sort of person in the foreground here. And they're heroic. And you can tell because they have some sort of sword. Very hero-like. Oh, man. I would recommend using the Wacom tablets when you do this step um, so that you have more control when you do your drawing. And, as I should have done earlier, I should have drawn this on a new layer um, 
but that's neither here nor there. Now we need to add some fantastic fantasy things um, in here also. I'm going to have like a little lake that kind of winds around. Now here's an interesting thing. Now if this river, or here, when it gets down to the bottom here, which is close to us, it would be very, very wide. But when it's back here, it would be very, very thin. So as it comes closer, even though it winds around, it gets thicker and thicker. Kind of goes behind there. And overlaps and thicker till it gets down here. All right, now let's add in some things. You know, we start sticking castles in here, and it gets, you know, very, very fantasy-like very quickly. Okay, there we go, a little castle there. Maybe there's, uh, you know, another castle here. Kind of fortress-like thing. Now your, your drawing doesn't have to be the best. What it does though is it helps you understand where you're going to place things as you start cutting them out. All right, now that I've got my drawing done, you'll call me over, I'll give you my signature there, and then you can start cutting pictures apart and adding them into Photoshop. Um, I'm going to start with these hills. So here we go, here's a great picture of a hill. Um, I'm going to go to View Image. It brings me to this, right click copy, and paste that in there. Um, I'm going to use the magic wand tool. And delete out the background. And continue to delete out the background. Alright, this is good. I'm going to put this hill right here. And I'm also going to, I'm going to duplicate this. And as I duplicate it, I'm going to put them behind. So Control J, duplicate, put it behind. And I'm going to move it. Now when I move it, I'm going to transform it. And I'm going to make the scale smaller. So I'm going to size this down here. Maybe something like that. And I'm going to make it more blue. So I'm going to go double click on the layer, go to color overlay, and I'm going to make this a little bit more blue, like that. I'm going to switch the blend mode to color and bring the opacity down to just about 8% there. Okay? I'm also going to go to Filter and Blur, because as I said, things get blurrier as they go back into the distance. So Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to blur it by maybe 2.5 pixels, three, 3 pixels. Now I'm going to do this each time I duplicate it. So Control j move it, and bring it down. I size it down. Now I can do some other things too to make it more interesting. I can hold control as I size it down. I could warp it here. So the hills look a little bit different each time I drop them in there. And then I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And then double click on the layer. Bring up color overlay and increase the opacity to make it just a little bit more blue. And I'm going to do it again. Control J, move it, lower it, transform it. More blue on the color overlay and more blur. All 
All right, that's pretty good there. I'm going to maybe add like a, a grassy valley over here and maybe a river kind of cutting through it or maybe a picture with a river. All right, now here's an interesting problem that I have. So I found this river picture. This is pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. It even has some mountains in it, but it's black and white. So I'm going to have to do a couple of things. First of all, I want to match the horizon line. Remember the horizon line is what we're always aiming for to give it depth. So I'm actually going to take this and the horizon line is right here. And I'm going to make sure that lines up with that. And I'm going to stretch this out here. And make sure the horizon line lines up with that. That looks good. Now to get color onto this picture, I might have to do some things to the picture where I make a layer over the top of it, change it to color, and paint it with some greens. Like that. Now that might be a little bit too drastic in parts. But I have a lot of control by painting on a, a different layer to make it more colorful. However I see fit. Okay, so I'm going to turn these layers back on here. Um, And I'm going to get, continue to find and cut out pictures and place them in the areas um, that I have in my, my drawing.